Here we are on Championship Sunday at the Moose Jaw Event Center for the World Para Ice Hockey Championships. It's it's medal round day today, and before they start the bronze medal game, uh, I'm joined by Amanda Fanitza. You got it. Here in Moose Jaw, all the way from Montreal. Amanda, uh, what brought you to the tournament? Why you, why are you here? What brought me to the tournament is, of course, I play para hockey in Montreal, Quebec. Um, and there was an announcement made for asking for volunteers for this event on social media, if I'm not mistaken, or on the website. I then applied uh, shortly after I got, I guess you could say accepted, from, from Michelle Aflan. Uh, she's absolutely a phenomenal person. Um, she's, she told me you could come as part of media. Uh, again, because we have players from Quebec that are playing on the Canadian national team, we wanted to shine a, shine on them a little bit more um, this tournament, especially the fact that it's it's at home. Uh, I feel like it's been many years that it hasn't been on home soil, so this was a great opportunity for us. This is the first time ever. Oh, it's the first time ever. It's oh, the first time ever, yeah. So uh, that's it. So it was like, why not do it now? Because, I mean, the next time we never know when that will be. And especially this, um, I think uh, I cannot. I don't have the exact number right now, but I think it's approximately five, if I'm not mistaken. Five Quebec athletes that are that are competing. So it was it was absolutely great. So this is what, what, what really led me to to being here this this weekend again. As you said, you're, you're a para hockey player yourself. Uh, can you talk about that experience? What it's what it's done for you as a person, and and, and how you're now trying to grow the game yourself, in the, especially in the women's side. Yes. Um, honestly, I started, I've been playing for, for approximately 13 months, give or take. Um, it's been a incredible experience when I first, not going to say first steps on the ice, my first strides on the ice, falling every 10 seconds was well worth it, fell in love with, with the sport instantly. I had Rafael Tuzinha on the ice who helped me during my very first practice. And she, in case you don't know, that's the, the very first uh, women's player. She's, on, she's playing on the Team Canada that's here yes. uh, in Moose Jaw. Yes. First female ever. Exactly, and hopefully she's playing for the, for the, for the gold medal game uh, this evening. Uh, but that's it. So she made my experience even more special because it was really one on one for like a good hour and a half. So I was mesmerized by her. I conversation with her off the ice as well. I told her like, I'm my fan girl <laughs> talking to you, warning, and she was like, it was absolutely okay, which I did, and she was totally un un understandable. But aside from from that, of course, I'm playing uh, in Montreal. Then last summer, being invited for the world team, well, Team World, uh, the World Challenge last summer. Uh, personal growth on and off the ice took all that I learned from that experience and used it for this this past season. Again, personal growth as well with my teammates and my coaching coaching staff. Of course, I have to give full credit to, to my team. I wouldn't be here without them because they're, they're, all, they're all incredible. Um, shout out to Vince and Maxim Gagnon, who's part of the Quebec team. Uh, so I've been trying to contact um, Azuri, the, the, you know, the Italian association. I've been trying to contact, I won't name all, all the countries and, and contacts, of course, but I've been trying to contact them for we just to grow grow the sports just knowing the knowing firstly of this women that are playing para hockey and if they are why not pursue and maybe try to create a team instead of just having a mixed team which is I feel like is all over the world which is great because we could play with the boys and the men because we are as capable of we, we, we shouldn't be downgraded in, in any way but want to have these these women teams and and Example in Montreal, Quebec, we're looking to grow that and have a women's team and having it provincially around Canada. So I feel like those are those are stepping stones that that should be made. And if these other countries, besides Great Britain, that has a women's team, which I am super proud of, I'm super proud of them, and they're growing the sport. And I can't wait to see them this year at the World Challenge. I'm sure they're going to be even like way better. Um, I'm just looking forward to hopefully growing the sport in other in other countries in Europe. Um, don't want to name them all, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm on the side. That's exactly what I'm doing. Cause I really want 2030 to have the women's in the Paralympic Games. That's that's what, what I really want. <laughs> Well, that's all uh, awesome, uh, Amanda. Now, you've had uh, some time, of course, when the games haven't been going on, to experience what we call Canada's most notorious city, which is Moose Jaw. Uh, talk about some of the favorite things you've done in Moose Jaw this week. Uh, first thing, obviously, was going to see Mac the Moose. Um, that was an experience. I didn't know he would be 
I'm forgetting the number, 34 feet high? Yeah, I think that's about right, yeah. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, so I, I didn't, because I, by images, he doesn't look so high until you get there, you're like, oh, wow. He's quite, <laughs> well, he's, he's the world's quite, biggest now. Yeah, that's easy, he's quite <laughs> ginormous. And right, right next door to him, there is a Canadian Air Force plane. A Tudor jet from the Snowbirds, yes, yeah. Yes, exactly, which I found that was absolutely amazing to, to, to see. And from there, uh, it's the tunnels. Tunnels of Musha was a phenomenal experience. So I did the Bunker Bunker 24. You got to really be in the year in the realm of, and the way it was done, it made you feel like you were there. It was absolutely great. Uh, and it was accessible, which is a huge plus. Um, as well as we then did Chinese immigration. The passage of fortune, yeah. Yeah, that's that was another like, we, we, of course, learned all these things in elementary school and high school, in our history books, but when you experience it that way, in an interactive form, it makes you realize, oh wow, like they actually went through all these things, and actually more that we didn't learn, but they have the knowledge and they're teaching us. And it was nice, we had a group of students with us, and they were mesmerized as much as we were with, the, with everything, and, and the teacher was like in awe, which was nice as well. And, and the kids were nice too because they, I felt like they maybe saw the, for the first time like someone in a wheelchair that was doing a tour. So they were, they were adapting as well and they were like, okay, you could go first. And they were super, they were helpful and it was actually great to, even, to like show kids that even though you have a disability, you could do anything and everything like everyone else does. So at least it gave them some sort of other perspective, which was nice. We left there, like this clinic, the, the kids learned more than just Immigrate and change immigration, they learn, of course, other things. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Amanda Fanitza, it's been great having you in Musha this week. It's great to meet you. Thank you uh, so much, Craig. And all the best on your uh, your journey to expand uh, the world of para hockey and help provide those opportunities to, to uh, other women uh, around the world. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.